We must fully learn the lessons of the 3D before we can manifest the abundance of the 5D on this week's High Priestess's Circle. Greetings everyone, I'm Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's Elemental Synastry reading. It's a divination technique I devised which uses the tarot, astrology, and the five elements. So we start off with the element of spirit and we draw a tarot card to see what's influencing the element of spirit. Alright, so a quick shuffle and then we shall flip it. Ooh. All right, so we have the chariot influencing the element of spirit. And as we look towards what the chariot means, it is basically mastering both the light and the dark to set the chariot in motion. And it's pretty much saying that within the spirit, there is going to be some movement. There is going to be there is going to be energy which is about to spring into action. Of course, it's still in the spirit, so it's about to manifest, but it's not quite there yet. And as we go through the rest of the reading, you're gonna find that every other element is going to relate back to the element of spirit. So let's see what the astrology die have to recommend. Okay, so the astrology die is also it's the advice or, or the possible outcome. And what we have here is Saturn in Aquarius in the first house. Okay, let me just line this up really quick. I roll once for the Deccan, and, or I'm sorry, I roll once for the house, and then a second time for the Deccan. So we are in the first Deccan of Aquarius, influenced by Saturn. Okay. So let me get my bearings really quick. What that essentially means is the first decan of, of Aquarius is influenced by Venus and it's called the Lord of Defeat. And usually it means either a sore winner or a sore loser. And we have here it we, we have here it also being represented or influenced by Saturn. So what I'm getting from this is we are looking at a destruction of the old identity because we're, we're in the first house, which is influenced by, by Aries, and that has to do with our outward persona and, and our identity. So here it's saying that we are looking at, at a restructuring or a defeat of the old persona, which is, which is causing this this new action, this new balance of the light and dark to, to spring into action from the realm of spirit. Okay, so let me, uh, let's move right along. Well, we'll come back and touch on that a little bit later. I just want to see what's happening with the other elements as well. All right, so we start off with spirit and then we go to fire. Now, fire is the human spirit. It could be our ambitions, our drives, um, everything which, which causes us to spring into action. And yeah, this seems to be a very action-oriented reading for this week. Okay. What's it? All right. Reverse Ace of Pentacles. Okay. So... An inverted Ace of Pentacles means that the spirit is working, or I should say the element of fire is working with, let's say, less than abundant financial foundations. It's something which hasn't yet manifested yet, and we're finding that we have a lot of ideas, we have a lot of things that we want to put into action, but we can't because those finances are holding us back a little bit. And let's see. Yes, how that, how that influences um, the spirit is usually when we have Saturn popping up, it's, it's saying 
Saturn is suggesting that, that we need to sort of look at and restructure what we're already doing and saying, okay, let's get our heads out of the clouds. Let's look towards the more practical matters to be able to manifest and harness the energy of fire in, in a more efficient and better way. And let's go back and ask the astrology die what they have to say. Okay, so we have, we have the North Node in Scorpio in the first or in the fourth house. All right. So we got a lot of water energy coming in with our north node. Okay. And let's re-roll for the Deccan. Okay. First Deccan of Scorpio. All right. So the first Deccan of Scorpio is, is the Lord of Loss of Pleasure. And that is influenced by Mars. Again, we have a lot of Mars energy influencing this too. So a lot of things are... Are, are causing us to question us as individuals, uh, our, our individuality. Um, we also have, let's see, 30, 30, 60, 90, okay. We also have a square forming between the energy of spirit and the energy of fire, which means it's, <laughs> it's causing us also a little bit more conflict. So here we have we have things which, which want to manifest, which aren't quite manifesting yet. Um, again, with the Lord of Defeat influencing it, um, we're, we're looking at, at either walking away from an old battle, or maybe we've won something and we're kind of a sore, uh, a sore winner about it. But I don't quite get that from this, especially with, with the Ace of Pentacles inverted. I think... Um, I think we, we've we've kind of, let's say, learned a very hard lesson in our individual approach or learned a very hard lesson about ourselves, which is coming in from the spirit. And again, it's also tied in with this north node. So the north node in Scorpio is suggesting that it's, it's also um, called... A card of mourning, so we are we we are getting over the loss of something, and with the energy of the spirit over here, it's probably suggesting the loss of ourselves in this case. Um, although with it being in the house of Cancer, it could also relate to the family. Maybe we've gone through some through some hard times related to our families and our role in the family as well, and this is. And again, with, with the Ace of Pentacles inverted, it, it refers to a flawed financial foundation. So, you know, maybe perhaps perhaps someone was cut off. Perhaps um, perhaps we, we are not in a position to rely on our families financially. And that has created a, a karmic lesson also with the North Node saying that, you know, you have to learn how to stand on your feet. You have to learn how to rise up as an individual to be able to manifest the chariot, which which wants to come in through the spirit. So taking taking responsibility for ourselves is 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 a it seems to be the the, the common or, or the common or recurring theme which is starting to happen with this reading. All right, let's move along. So. After the fire is air, and let's see what air is being influenced by. All right, let me also get the astrology die. Okay, so. An inverted six of pentacles, okay. <laughs> Wow. All right. So it looks like um, looks like the uh, the material realm is really giving it to us today. So the inverted six of pentacles means that it means that that we have to settle up our debts, and it usually means like let's say a loan has come due, or we can't escape our our fiscal responsibilities anymore. Um, and with that influencing air, it could mean that we have to look at how we are not only approaching 
the the intellectual pursuit or the idea of how we view money, but also in how we communicate money as well. Because the element of error is not only intellectual pursuits, but it's also communication. Um, yeah, so... A lot of a lot of lessons regarding to or, or, or relating to the individual, relating to finance, relating to, to family, all this kind of stuff. Let's see what the astrology die have to recommend. All right, so we have Saturn popping up again in Pisces in the twelfth house. Wow. Okay, more Saturn, and let's let's line this up really quick. Okay, let's reroll for the Deccan. All right, four. So we are in the first decan. So the first decan of Pisces is the Lord of Abandoned Success. And that is also influenced by Saturn as well. So a lot of Saturnian energy. A lot of we have to learn the lessons of the physical plane. We have to know that... Yeah, even though we may be spiritual beings having a, a physical experience, we can't just have our head our, our heads in the clouds. We also have to apply ourselves in a meaningful way to be able to step back into motion with the chariot again. The spirit wants wants to create that abundance for us, but we also have to be willing to take it for ourselves and to look in the mirror and to say, what am I doing either right or what am I doing wrong? Okay, so with it being in Pisces in the 12th house, which is also um, ruled by Pisces, we're looking at a lot of endings here. And with the Lord of Abandoned Success influencing Saturn here, and also influencing the inverted Six of Cups, it's probably suggesting that we need to walk away from something. So the Lord of Abandoned Success either walks away from, from things for two reasons. Either because the plans weren't, weren't um, good enough to begin with, or because maybe it was just a bad situation. So again, it all comes to restructuring and reorganizing our plans, restructuring and reorganizing how we view ourselves and how we view our finances as well. Okay. Wow. Okay. Lots of lessons on, on this one. Let's move right along. We are now going to the element of earth, which is represented by the pentacles. Okay, so what's influencing the element of Earth? If we get more Saturnian energy, I wouldn't be surprised. All right, let's see what's happening. Ah, the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is influencing the element of Earth. Okay, now, on the, on the brighter side, the Queen of Wands is suggesting within the material realm and within our finances, there is a balance. So perhaps, perhaps we are in a situation where we are comfortable and where we are surviving, but we're not necessarily thriving. We want more from life. We want we, we don't want to feel like we're just going through the motions and just paying those bills month after month, month after month, and thinking, okay, what's what's going on with my life? I want I want to create more purpose with it. So from a material standpoint, it looks like things are kind of at an even keel. Um, but again, there is a lot of conflict happening elsewhere with the other elements. So there is drive to want to do more or to expect more from ourselves. All right, what do the astrology die have to recommend? Venus in Leo in the second house. All right, so a lot of earth energy with that too. And let's reroll for the Deccan. Seven, all right. So we have, we have the, Let's see if I remember correctly. We have the Lord of Material Success influencing. Oh, I'm sorry. 
scratch that, take that back. We have the Lord of Victory influencing the the Queen of Wands in regards to our Earth element. Okay, so it means that we're on the precipice, just as with the Chariot, we are on the precipice of some type of financial and material gain that the efforts in which we have been working towards are about to pay off, but they haven't quite paid off yet. It means that victory is a likely outcome, but it doesn't mean that victory is here yet. And with Venus influencing it, it is also suggesting to, to, to basically stop and smell the roses a little bit. Try not to... Try not to look at just the bottom line or just the work or just the money, but also try and find that beauty in the everyday things that you do as well. And we'll find that it'll help to manifest the rest of these happening. Let's see what else we got going on. Do we have... Ah, okay, okay. Looks like we also have... Okay, so, so we've got... No, we don't. No, we don't. Um, we're almost forming a sextile, but it's not quite there yet. So, yeah, we're, we're again stick to stick to trying to find that beauty in everyday in, in everyday life. Also, with it being in Taurus, it's teaching us to also appreciate what we have. Don't forget how far we've come as well. I know it's really easy. It's it's easy to go through life and, and to just focus on what you don't have and to focus on where you want to be. But again, a lot of times it's in order to, to get ahead, we have to also realize what we have as well. And it's, it's, it would suggest that with the Queen of Wands influencing the element of Earth, that we are kind of coming to that realization as well. So just keep on keeping on. And look towards that beauty in everyday life. Look to the beauty in what we have. And we'll find that that energy be able to manifest a little bit better. What we'll find it, if we can do that, and, and in these elemental synastry readings, I always try and go towards the most positive aspects so that it helps to, let's say, declutter or untangle the aspects with, which can be a little bit more challenging. So focus, again towards what we already have to help declutter our to help declutter what what's happening in our intellect and to also help declutter what's happening in our fire as well so the air and the fire all right moving right along we've got the cups which is our emotional nature which is water the element of water um and let's see what cups are being influenced by Okay, it could also be considered the subconscious, uh, those those sort of hidden drives that, that we are not necessarily always aware of. All right, the Page of Swords. Okay, let me put this over here. So the Page of Swords would suggest a sort of, a sort of either a new intellectual endeavor the start of something new, or it can also represent something that, like, let's say, maybe there, there, there is a decision which needs to be made with with haste. Um, let's let's see what the astrology die have to say with that. So there's something happening in our emotional nature and in our subconscious, our subconscious that that needs to be decided. Okay. So what's going to help us decide? The North Node in Taurus in the fifth house. All right. So we got Taurus coming up again. We have Taurus influencing the the material realm over here. And now we have Taurus influencing the emotional realm as well. Okay. And again, with the North Node, it has to deal with the karmic lessons of this lifetime. So there are things... Maybe we haven't come to that decision because a lot of times when, when you do face your North Node, those are the lessons to learn. And 
and they, they can also be very scary to learn. So, so there's a lot of emotional, a lot of emotional energy that we have to either grow up from or that we have to cut loose. And with the North Node, here, let's we roll for the Deccan. Okay, one. So we are in the first, oh, we're in the first Deccan of Taurus. Okay. Okay, so, so with that North Node influencing the first Deccan of Taurus, it's saying, well, let, let me go back a little bit. The first Deccan of Taurus is, is basically the poverty card. It means that, that we are struggling financially or spiritually, because a lot of times pentacles and, and earth energy can mean spiritual wealth or spiritual poverty, as well as financial wealth or poverty. And what this is saying is that there's a lot of karmic lessons and there's a lot of energy which is devoted to our poverty right now. Um, it's, it's suggesting, and again, we, we, have, we have Venus over here saying, look at what you have, but then we have on an, on an emotional level, we feel, we feel destitute almost in, in what we have. So it's, it's saying, again, as it would go back and, and, and suggest, is that we need to overcome that. And with it being in the house of Leo, it has to deal, or with the fifth house or the house of Leo, it has to deal with our entertainment and our fun and our relaxation. So I would say part of the karmic lesson, it's, it's also tied in, yeah, it's also tied in with the earth um, or with, with the pentacles, which is the element of earth. There's a lot to learn with appreciating what we have to be able to go out and to attract more abundance within our lives. And you have to feel that on, on an, on, on an emotional level. You have to feel that gratitude. You have to feel just the joy of being alive rather than saying, okay, you know, my, my bank account isn't where it's at, so I'm going to be miserable. Or, you know, my, what, what I have, I'm not making enough money, so I'm going to be miserable. I'm going to wait till I make more money or I'm going to wait to, to, to be this before I can be this. But that's, that's really the lesson, is it saying, nah, nah, don't do that. On an emotional level, you have to create that, that joy and create that abundance within yourself before you begin to attract the outside world giving you abundance. We must be in service to others and we also have to learn how to enjoy ourselves again. So appreciate what we have and learn to enjoy ourselves again. Um, and again, the Page of Swords, also pages in, in sort of the, the journey of life, they, they sort of represent, let's say, childhood or our, our sort of the, the aspects of ourselves that, that we still need to develop, the aspects of ourselves that, that still need to mature. And so what it's, what it's suggesting here is there needs to be some education in, in our emotional maturation as well. So a lot of karmic lessons, a lot of lessons from Saturn, and yeah. All right, so let's do a, let's do a recap. So spirit wants to manifest into action. It's not quite there yet because we we have dealt with sort of an identity crisis of ourselves and we are looking towards Saturn to to restructure and to and to reevaluate who we are as individuals. As we go to the fire, which spirit is also squaring fire, we are we're, we're finding that our financial foundations are a little bit flawed or let's say our, our drive is flawed because of our financial foundations, and that is represent or th that is also being influenced by the mourning, by um, by by the losses that we, that we've experienced. Generally related, probably to our family life or to our home life in, in some in some way, shape, or form. And again, those are karmic lessons to learn as well, with it being influenced by the North Node. All right, as we go on to the element of air, we're finding that there is there is fiscal responsibility that that we have to 
that we have to embrace because it's also represented by Saturn. Saturn loves to make a lot of um, a lot of structure, and it's not necessarily that that Saturn is is trying to intentionally limit us. It's just saying, hey, look, you got to learn the lessons of the 3D to be able to soar into the 5D. So that's what Saturn's trying to tell us right now. And with it also being in Pisces and um, and also being the, the Lord of Abandoned Success, we are looking at a lot of endings. We are looking at a lot of a lot of shedding our old ways of thought. We are looking at shedding a lot of the old ways in which we communicate as well. Okay, so looking at the element of Earth or the pentacles, we're we're saying that yeah, we might be we might be doing okay, but we're not doing as good as we want to do. And before we can go off and, you know, basically create all this abundance for us, create all of that um, cre to create the excess, also realize that we need to recognize what we have as well and be appreciative for what we have. And that's also suggested in the cups by the Page of Swords and, and, um, and basically the, 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 the Lord of Poverty coming into our lives as well. So we don't have to necessarily be emotionally destitute. It's just a lesson that we have to learn. It's a karmic lesson we have to learn. We need to to learn those hard lessons because there's a lot of Saturnian energy over here. So we need to learn all these karmic lessons before we can truly manifest the direction and the drive of the chariot. The chariot is a very action-oriented card. And a lot of this stuff, it's, it's like a... <laughs> it's like a... A race car in the red for anyone who knows that movie. You know, you don't want the race car in the red. The race car wants to take off. Well, guess what? The race car has to be in the red because we need to get those foundations done first before we can really begin to manifest the awesomeness which is waiting for us. So, okay, so that's about it for now. Um, thank you all for joining me on this week's reading. I hope to see you all next week. And much love and blessings. I love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. If you resonate with what you are seeing or hearing, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and share Obleron's content. It really helps him to spread the word and to grow his channel and pages. Collective readings are posted Mondays on the High Priestess's Circle. Teachings are posted Wednesdays on the Magister's Sanctum, and the music from those episodes are posted Fridays on the Empress's Theater. Posters and merch related to Obleron's teachings are available at obleron.square.site. Music from the episodes is also available at obleron.bandcamp.com. Obleron is spelled O-B-L-Y-R-O-N. Lastly, don't forget to connect with the community on Discord. It's called the Magister's Council, and look for the invite link in the description boxes and profiles below. There are astrology and wellness bots, as well as games and discussion forums available for free. There is also an exclusive members-only section with additional content and live streams for subscribers. Obleron also takes inquiries for services through Discord. In case you missed anything, all the links are available in the description boxes and profiles below. Thank you everyone, and much love to all.